Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, this is part 3 of my series testing out the best selling foundations at Sephora. And on today's video, we are going to test out this NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. So this is 66 Canadian dollars for 30 ml. And I got the shade Santa Fe, which is described medium with neutral undertones and a peach tone. So this foundation claims to have this unique formula that mimics the skin's natural tone fusing with it for the closest match. This also claims to be transfer and sweat resistant that stays color true and fresh looking all day long while radiantly smoothing the look of skin. So let's start. I'm going to prep my skin with the NYX Plump Right Back Plumping Serum. The first ingredient that I saw on this foundation is silicone but the second is water. So I'm using a water-based primer and also because I want to really see that radiant glow. When you feel that tacky feeling, it's the best time to put on your foundation because you know that it's going to stick. I noticed on the packaging when I open it, it has an image saying to shake the bottle well. Even at the back, it says shake well. So forget to put it on both packaging and the bottle. I think it's very important to shake this foundation. Let's start with one pump. I guess two pump. Now that I've shaken the bottle, we can really see how liquid it is. It's really dripping on my hand. So on this side, I'm going to use a brush. Oh yay, I think that's my perfect shade. It's so easy to apply. Like I don't feel any drag. It doesn't also have any scent to it. For the last few foundations, I always get scented ones, so it's a good thing but today we have an unscented foundation wow that was so fast i blended that foundation so fast this foundation is said to have a unique formula where it mimics your skin tone and maybe that's why this shade looks very skin like on me also looking at the mirror i can still see my pores on the side of my cheek like it's not really accentuating it but i can still see it but looking at the camera it really gave my skin that kind of porcelain look it made this part of my face look very smooth i think on photos this would register so well so that's with the brush with two pumps let's try and use a sponge on the other side and this is full on coverage when i use my airbrush sponge it gave more coverage like <laughs> look at that i can't see a lot of my hyperpigmentation anymore this foundation is definitely so much better when applied with a sponge because look at the coverage on this side versus with a sponge and it's the same amount and look how it started to look kind of fair but then when it sets, it really looks like my skin tone. I now believe about that formulation that mimics your skin tone. Because like, okay, we're going to let this set for a bit. And you'll see how it just mimics my skin tone. I'm going to add half a pump on my right side because this looks like I have full coverage foundation. And this one looks like I have a medium coverage. So let's even it out. Yeah. The sponge, since it's not absorbing the foundation, it's really giving you that good coverage. I just realized that on Sephora's website, it says for best result, apply to clean, moisturized skin without primer. So hopefully this still works because this primer is like a serum, so it doesn't really feel like a primer like not a silicone heavy primer so so far i'm really loving how this looks skin like it doesn't feel heavy i like the perfect amount of dewiness on the high points of my cheeks and i just love how smooth my skin is looking like on the camera looking at the mirror i can still see some of my pores but it doesn't accentuate it i also love the coverage of this foundation i think that this could give you full coverage i almost cannot see my hyperpigmentation on my right side on this one i have really stubborn hyperpigmentation so i can still see it i know that i have to color correct that 
but on the rest of my face i don't see my broken capillaries on this side i don't see any redness so when it comes to coverage it can really give you full-on coverage so i'm going to start putting on my cream products i'm going to start with my cream bronzer this is the elf pretty bronzer oh yeah it just melts on top of that without disturbing the foundation i feel like this or the ysl will definitely be my new foundation for my kit they're also blend seamlessly on top of this foundation and the foundation is still a little tacky so i'm gonna wait for about 10 minutes before i do the transfer test but look how smooth my skin looks like it looks amazing I can't stop looking at my skin. It looks so smooth. Okay, it has been more than 10 minutes. Let's see if this foundation is transfer proof. <sighs> Definitely not. <laughs> That's a lot of transfer. So you really need to set this in powder. <laughs> Oh my god, that, I didn't expect that. That's a lot of transfer. Finish my makeup and this is how the foundation is looking like. I really like how this formula mimics my undertone. And it really looks like skin while giving you that full coverage. Now that I've set it with powder, it's not that radiant. But I can still see some radiance on the high points of my cheeks. But what I love most about this foundation is how it's making my skin look super, super smooth. I can't say that this foundation can be used for that no makeup makeup look. Because of that full coverage, it really looks like makeup. It really looks like you have foundation on. But looking at the camera and how it reflects, it really is giving me such an amazing, good looking skin i look like i have very very smooth radiant skin so let's do the photography test and see how it looks like on photos with flash and non-flash so far i'm really loving this foundation so i'll update you on the fourth hour and on the eighth hour so this is the fourth hour so far, even though this foundation is not transfer proof, and I still have that full coverage. And my face still looks very smooth, and I can still see some radiance, especially on the side of my cheeks. So, so far, even after the fourth hour, I still have no complaints about this foundation. Eight hour foundation update. I'm so ready to remove all my makeup and rest, but this is how my face is looking like. Little bobo break. Cheers, guys. If you guys have cocoa in your area, what's your favorite drink? My drink has a funny name. It's called Three Guys. Three Guys because it has boba and then the yellow pudding and then the black jelly. It's so good though. It's so, so good. I always get it with half sugar and less ice because I can just add more ice at home. So, so good. Okay. Back to review. So on the 8th hour, I find that I am oily, especially on my forehead and on the side of my cheeks. But it's not too much. I won't say that I look very, very greasy. It's just like a right amount of oil that it still looks glowy and it still looks polished. But I also see some of the foundation rubbing off on the side of my nose. But that's because I was wiping it. And some here. I don't know why, but my blush is not that prominent anymore when I put this on top of this foundation. So I think it's better to use a setting spray after putting all your cream and powders on top of this foundation to really seal it in. Because I think the foundation is so smooth. When it comes to coverage, I would say I have medium coverage now, but it doesn't look spotty. It's just like a good fade. So now I have medium coverage all over my face. So when it comes to wearability, I would say that it could wear up to 8 hours, but it will have a fade. So by the 8 hour, 
you'll be left with a medium coverage instead of a full coverage. So if you're planning to wear this for eight hours, just make sure to use a setting spray. So I'm giving this foundation a four out of five stars. I have a lot of good things to say about this foundation. I like that it really adapted to my skin tone. And even though they only have 34 shades, I find that it is very inclusive because when I was looking at every color, those shades really look like real skin tones because I find that some of the brands especially with the drugstore but even for high-end now I find they will just put out some random shades and when you swatch it you're gonna think is this really a shade that would match a real skin tone sometimes they just Put it out there to have that illusion of inclusivity and maybe that's also the reason why i see a lot of bridal makeup artists having this foundation in their kit because the shades are just amazing you can really match your client's skin tone with the shades that they provide i also like that it is scent free it is sls sles and paraben free and they really omit a lot of harmful ingredients in their product i really appreciate that as well but the thing that i really 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 love about this foundation is how it made my skin look very smooth and not too dewy not too matte it's just perfect and even the camera captured it very well. So I think that this foundation is really good for special events. If you have any special occasion to go to when you know that you'll be photographed and your videos will be taken, this would be a good foundation. This will also be a really good foundation for bridal. If you were to ask me if this would be good for an everyday look, unless you want a really full coverage foundation for every day then yes but it's really hard to sheer this out because one pop will really give you that medium coverage instantly so i don't think it's every day it's more for a special occasion i just want to remind you though when using this foundation it separates so you just have to make sure that you shake the bottle really well if you want this to really apply evenly on your face i see some reviews when they were saying that didn't blend well on their face i think that the problem is with not shaking the bottle before applying it onto your face so make sure that you shake the bottle really well before applying it on your face so when i was researching this foundation i saw some bad reviews when it comes to people who used it that has very oily skin they said that it was splotchy at the end of the day the oil was really seeping through so the oil broke down the foundation and also with very very dry skin they said that it really highlighted their texture that didn't happen to me i have combination skin but i'm not very dry or nor very oily i'm just in the middle so i'm oily in the t-zone dry in some other parts but it's not super super dry super super oily so i didn't notice that when i was using this foundation and when i look at the reviews at sephora this actually have four four stars but like the fourth star was like not shaded very well so it's like three and three fourths star but when i looked at it it has 3700 reviews and out of those 3700 it has really good reviews overall my experience with this foundation is really good now i know why this foundation is in a lot of my bridal makeup artist friends kit it really looks nice on photos on videos it looks smooth on the skin so overall i was really really happy with the results using this foundation so yeah i hope that this video helps you in finding the right foundation for you and if it did please don't forget to like this video please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll always be updated once a new video is out on my next video i will be reviewing the charlotte tilbury's airbrush flawless foundation this is also claiming to be very long wearing and can give you that airbrush look so we'll find out on my next video so hope to see you guys there i'll see you in my next one